My name is Emma, and this is my husband, Manu. Together, we are changing the course of Kenya. And this is our story. When Emma and I were young, we went to school, and as part of our studies, we were educated about reproductive health. Unlike my parents who dropped out of school when they had children at a young age, Manu and I were taught how to prevent unintended pregnancies and sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. We had health providers who offered age-appropriate reproductive health information and services. This helped both of us complete our secondary education and find jobs. We met later in life and got married, and we have made our family decisions together. We treat each other with respect, and we agree to use family planning. Today we have three children. We will ensure that our children are empowered with reproductive health so they too can have a healthy transition to adulthood. Access to reproductive health care has helped our family be healthier, more educated, and contribute more to the community and the nation. For Kenya, this means that poverty is being reduced and the economy is stronger. The people of Kenya recognize the importance of reproductive health. According to our constitution, every person has a right to the highest attainable standard of health, which includes the right to health care services, including reproductive health care. This pertains to people of all ages, including young people, because reproductive health is important throughout our lives. As exemplified by Emma and Manu, Reproductive health for young people is also a central component of our nation's development. Today, young people in Kenya have many advantages the previous generations did not. This is exciting, especially because we have the largest generation of young people in history. A large young population is a great opportunity for our nation. But it also presents challenges because of the increasing demand for social services and natural resources. Let's look at the numbers. Kenya's population has been growing rapidly. In just the last four decades, the entire population has nearly quadrupled in size, from 11 million people in 1969 to about 40 million today. When we take a closer look at the age structure of our population, we see there are more people in the younger age groups than the older age groups. Here, we see the growing number of people under age 25. Today, approximately 25 million people, meaning nearly two out of three people are under age 25. The size of our large young population is a result of high birth rates. The average woman has between four and five births during her lifetime. By 2030, even if fertility drops to an average of just below four children per woman, the total population will still grow to 66 million people, and the number of people under age 25 will increase to more than 38 million people. That's almost the size of Kenya's entire population today. Fertility rate is strongly influenced by the reproductive health and family planning needs of young people. Early marriage and early childbearing contribute to high fertility, as women are more likely to have many children throughout their lives when they start childbearing at a young age. Today, more than one out of four young women is married by age 18, increasing their likelihood of having children at an early age. Nearly one half of births to young women under age 18 are the result of unintended pregnancy, meaning these young women are becoming mothers sooner or more frequently than intended. In fact, nearly one out of three young women has an unmet need for family planning, meaning they wish to delay childbearing but are not using any method of contraception and are at risk of having an unintended pregnancy. Sex at a young age can increase the risk of serious health consequences for both girls and boys. Sex during adolescence increases the likelihood of contracting HIV or other sexually transmitted infections in addition to unplanned pregnancies, unsafely performed abortion, high-risk births, and disease and death from pregnancy-related complications. Young women ages 15 to 19 are twice as likely to die 
during pregnancy or childbirth as compared to women in their 20s. In addition to the health concerns, pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections can have long-term social and economic implications for young people, including increased likelihood of school dropout, which limits future employment opportunities and raises the risk of engaging in risky behaviors or crime. Without reproductive health care for young people, these social and economic consequences will continue to have impacts that are felt throughout the nation and hinder the achievement of Kenya's Vision 2030 and the Millennium Development Goals. Research demonstrates that reproductive health and family planning for young people will lay the groundwork to improve health and well-being, manage rapid population growth, and achieve social and economic development, including Kenya's Vision 2030 and the Millennium Development Goals for poverty reduction, gender equality, provision of social services, and environmental sustainability. Reproductive health is a crucial component of health and well-being for young people and helps manage population growth while contributing to Kenya's economic productivity. With access to reproductive health care, including contraceptives, young people are equipped to prevent unintended pregnancies and diseases. This makes it easier for them to be healthy and stay in school, to find employment and invest in their future. With more income, these young people are healthier and wealthier. When they are ready to become parents, they will be equipped to plan their families and reduce the economic burden of unintended pregnancies on their families and communities. At the national level, family planning for young people helps to manage rapid population growth. This makes it easier for the government to provide quality social services such as education and health care and to sustainably manage natural resources for future development. The government can invest more in economic infrastructure and job creation. As population growth slows, the number of workers relative to the number of children will increase which creates the condition for accelerated economic growth for the entire nation. We call this phenomenon a demographic bonus. So reproductive health care for young people leads to improved well-being and economic growth for individuals and the nation and helps to achieve Kenya's development goals. Countries around the world have shown us that with investments in young people, it is possible to experience rapid and transformative economic growth. Let's take a closer look at how one country, Thailand, experienced the demographic bonus. We are looking at Thailand's population pyramid in 1960. This graph shows the age distribution of the population. Each layer of the diagram is an age group, and the width of each layer is a proportion of the population. It forms the shape of a triangle when the population is growing rapidly because there are more people in the younger age groups at the base of the pyramid than in the older age groups at the top of the pyramid. Looking at Thailand's population pyramid from 1960, we see that the majority of the population is under age 25. During the 1960s and the decades that followed, mortality rates declined and investments in family planning led to rapid declines in fertility, so the population growth slowed down. With fewer births, Thailand was able to invest more resources per child, leading to more secondary school completion, especially among girls, as well as delayed marriage and delayed childbearing. By 2010, we see Thailand's age structure evolved to have fewer children and a smaller population of young people. The pyramid is now dominated by adults who can be part of a productive labor force and contribute to economic development. And population growth has slowed down to a more manageable pace for families, communities, and the nation. Today, Kenya has a population structure similar to the pyramid of Thailand in 1960 
with a majority of the population under age 25. Investments in reproductive health of young people will help to ensure a healthy transition to adulthood, lower birth rates, and create the conditions necessary for the demographic bonus. However, this kind of economic progress is not automatic. As observed with Thailand's demographic bonus, it requires a series of investments across sectors to ensure that young people are healthy, educated, and equipped with skills and opportunities to contribute to the country's economic growth. Enabling young people to stay in school has many social and economic benefits, including improved health, less likelihood of engaging in risky behaviors, a greater ability to make personal and household decisions, and more opportunities for employment later in life. Educating young people about reproductive health will empower them to prevent unintended pregnancies and sexually transmitted infections and make it easier for them to stay in school. In fact, women with more education tend to have fewer children. On this bar chart, we have total fertility rate, meaning the average number of births per woman on the left axis, and educational attainment along the bottom axis. As level of education increases, the average number of births per woman decreases. Women with no education have an average of more than twice as many children as women who attend secondary school or higher. Imagine the impact of investments in reproductive health combined with investments in health, education, and job creation. If all adolescent girls in Kenya completed secondary school, and all of the adolescent mothers were employed instead of becoming pregnant at such a young age, the cumulative effect could add $3.4 billion to Kenya's gross income each year. So how can we achieve universal access to reproductive health care for young people today? It is time for the government and political leaders to increase support and leadership for reproductive health among young people. Government officials must support youth-focused policies and allocate resources that ensure young people are healthy, educated, and employed later in life. The line social ministries, including the ministries focused on health, youth, social services, and national development, must implement multisectoral approaches that actively engage young people in policy making and program implementation. Health sector leaders should work with service providers to expand age appropriate reproductive health services for young people. These services must be tailor made to meet the diverse and evolving needs of young people. Education sector leaders, including teachers, must prioritize initiatives that help young people, especially girls, stay in school and ensure that reproductive health information is included in the school curriculum. Leaders at all levels, including religious and civic leaders, elders and parents, must be sensitized to understand the consequences of early marriage. They should relay this information to their communities and ensure young people have access to reproductive health care. Young people must educate their peers about the benefits of reproductive health. This involves engaging boys and girls in efforts to reach their peers most effectively with accurate information. And they must be actively involved with the planning and implementation of their reproductive health policies and programs. Our young people are the future of Kenya. For a healthy transition to adulthood, Young people must be equipped with reproductive health care. As was the case for Emma and Manu, when youth have access to comprehensive, age-appropriate reproductive health care, the impact is felt throughout the nation. Health is improved, poverty is reduced, higher levels of education are achieved, and economic development is in place. By empowering young people with reproductive health today, including family planning. 
we can build a more prosperous Kenya.